Good morning. All right. We are back. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, everybody. We are back. We are back. Good morning. We are back. Good morning. Good morning. We are back. Good to see everybody this morning. Mute yours. Good morning. Turn this out. Good morning. Good morning. I know, yeah, I know y'all. We 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 doing a little something a little different. Um uh, you know, it's it's a good morning, but we are just doing it a little bit different. I'm Minister yes, Curtis. I'm Minister Issa. And we're from the Altar International Church where we serve with the great apostle Gene August. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. So we're trying this Zoom thing here to see how it works out for us. <laughs> so y'all, please be a little patient with us. We're trying something new. We're trying to see if we can we can keep up with what's going on now on the internet. And so we're just glad to be in your presence today. Amen. 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 So um, we're going to give people a few minutes to come on in. Remember to share the video, share the video, share the broadcast. Let everybody know that the Healing Room is live on this morning. Share the broadcast so that everybody know that we are live. We are back in the building, yes. not in the actual church building, but we're back in the building of Facebook. And we're so glad that you all can join us on yes. this morning. Amen. 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 We are from the Alter International Church where the address is 8039 Pen Randall Place, Upper Marlboro, Maryland, 20772. Thank you, you and you, for joining us on this morning. Amen. All right, y'all. So we're coming from the Old Testament today. We're coming from the book of Deuteronomy, Moses' book. Amen. We're coming from Deuteronomy 22, verses 9 and 10. Get your swords, get your Bible apps, whatever it is you use to help you follow along. Make sure you got your pad and your pen so you can take notes because the Bible says we got to study to show ourselves approved, right? Yeah. So we got to take notes to make sure that what we're giving you is proper, right, man? We can't just take anything from everybody and then don't research it and know that we are getting the proper word, the true unadulterated word of God. Amen. 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 All right. So as usual, we honor our father in the faith. We honor the presence of the Holy Spirit. We honor our mother in the faith, Dr. Denise. Our father is Apostle um, Jean August. Amen. We thank God for them. Amen. For all that they pour into us and into you, because what we get, the revelation we get from them, we bring it to you. Amen. 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 So we honor them on this morning. We are replications of our father. Right? Amen. That's right. Our That's right. of our father. Amen. And our mother. So let's get started. We're going to open up in prayer and then we're going to get right to the scripture. Amen. Oh, Heavenly Father, Lord, in the precious name of Jesus, as we come to you right now this morning, oh, Heavenly Father, yes. Lord, we come to minimize ourselves, but maximize you, oh, Heavenly Father. Yes. Touch the people right where they are. Massage their heart, oh, Heavenly Father, that they may be going to you, Lord. Yes, Lord. And Lord, cleanse them. In Jesus' name we pray. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. All, All right. right. All right. Here, we Here we go. We are coming from Deuteronomy 22. Yes. I'm going to lift up verses 9 through 11. Okay. It says, you shall not sow your vineyard mm -hmm. with two kinds of seeds, lest the world yield be forfeited. Mm -hmm. The crop that you have sown and the yield of, of the vineyard. Yes. You shall not plow with an ox and a donkey together. Yes. You shall not wear cloth of wool and linen mixed together. Yes. Now, yes. now, now, now it says um, in, in uh, verse 9, it, it says, you shall not sow your vineyard with two kinds of seed, That's right. lest the whole yield be forfeited yes the crop that you have sown and yield of the vineyard and yes. so here um we can go back to adam we can go back to the beginning we can go back to genesis mm -hmm. where, where adam and eve had two sons mm -hmm. uh cain and abel one of them had the seed of of, of satan that's right the other one had the seed of god yes. and so abel he he brought his uh his lamb to god yes. And as he brought his lamb to God, mm -hmm. uh, God was well pleased. That's right. However, uh, uh, Cain gave God anything. And when he yes. gave God anything, it angered God. God gave him an opportunity yes. to, to uh, like a do over. However, he was stubborn in his own ways. And so mm -hmm. we, we have to be careful with the seed 
that we sow That's to right. God because, right. because God just doesn't take anything. That's God right. gives you his best. Right. God gives us a, a, a hundred percent and only asks for 10 percent back. Right. And so that means that you have to manage the nine percent 90 percent mm -hmm. that God gives you right. however right. uh sometimes we mismanage that and we look for a blessing yes. uh and 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 uh we don't when we get up don't get our blessing we don't get our breakthrough Come then on, we sir. get angry yes. and so yes. let me give you an example if you uh uh, uh going to, and giving God uh uh, ten dollars yes. uh, uh, out of a hundred is a good seed mm -hmm. because that's biblical. However, if you yes. give a uh, 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 God a dollar, mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, then you look looking for a breakthrough. That's not a good seed. And yes. see here, uh, what will happen is uh, God is not the lottery. Okay, let's get that uh, confirmed. Yes. You you wait, you sow a dollar yes. and get a million. It does not work that way. God yes. wants to use you in the proper way. Mm -hmm. And so it, you have to be along with the biblical principles to, yes. to be able to uh, get the harvest. Yes, absolutely. So Moses was writing these laws to Israel to show them how important separation was to God. If you remember when he talked to Noah, he told Noah to take the animals two by two onto the ark, amen. He said each of his own kind. He was separating them for a purpose, amen. God separates things so that his purpose will be fulfilled. He separates us so that our purpose in the kingdom of God will be fulfilled. Remember, it said right here that we have a vineyard. We have two kinds of seeds in our vineyard, amen. What we have in us is precious unto God. So what we take in, he's very concerned about. So when we go out and we listen to too many pastors, we listen to too many preachers, you are sowing seeds into them, amen. You're taking in their experiences. You're taking in their environment. You're taking in their history, amen. So the Bible tells us we have to guard our eye gates and our ear gates, amen, because what we take in is a seed. Everything we see is a seed, because remember, the heart, amen, the heart um, out of the mouth flows the issues of the heart. Amen. On, Everything you take in goes into your heart and then you speak it. So God is very, very specific about seeds, about what we sow into these earthen vessels, because the Bible says there are treasures in these. We are vessels. We are earthen and vessels, amen. So we have to be careful what seeds we allow to grow into our vineyard. My Lord, and so let me uh, give you a practical example how yes. uh, you cannot uh, sow two different seeds in yes. the same ground. Yes. Now, now uh, I'm not a chef, but I do know a little bit about cooking. And, 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 and whenever you you uh, pour the grease yes. in, into the uh, uh, the pot or the pan. Yes. Uh, uh, if you if you're cooking a fish and you're cooking chicken, you cannot cook them the same time because That's the right. chicken will begin to taste like the fish. Okay, and so and so and so you have to cook the chicken first. Yes. And 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 once you're done cooking the the chicken then you can go and cook your fish because once you cook the fish anything that comes after that is going to taste yes. just like fish yeah so so yes. so often yes. we we try to put two different things in the same pot yes. to, to try to get it done at the same time now yes. i talked about the chicken mm -hmm. uh chicken is a bird yes eagle is a bird yes. however there are on two different dimensions there you go on, on, where on, the chicken can chicken cannot fly he will run and flap his wings however he won't be able to get off that ground that's too high right. but right. the eagle flies so high that he can look down on the chicken yes. because he's in a totally different dimension mm -hmm. and so what we have to understand is the children of israel are on a totally different uh, uh dimension yes. where they they are supposed to fly very high yes. because they have to be close to God. Absolutely, absolutely. So when you plant two different seeds in your crop side by side, what happens? What happens when a farmer, he plants his seed? You never go to a garden or to a farm and you see tomatoes that, and then you see cucumbers and then you see uh, corn. You always see them sow seeds in the same row. Each row has the same seed in it, amen? Because what happened is when you plant a seed that it has a more stronger root in it, it will take the nutrients from the lesser seed, amen? And that's what happens with us. When we go out and we plant seeds in us, as a believer and you join with unbelievers, amen, now you're sowing a seed, you're, you're taking away from the work of Christ on the cross, amen? So when people say, 
when they see you with unbelievers, because the Bible says we are in the world, but we are not of the world. And so when they see us behaving as unbelievers, they can't tell who is who, My Lord. right? And so that's why it's very important to be careful what kind of seed we are sowing. We are supposed to make a difference in the life of the unbeliever. You're supposed to be able to tell the difference between a believer and an unbeliever so that they can say, wow, what are you doing? that makes me want to come into the kingdom of God because our actions and reactions are being watched even when we don't know it, amen? So we have to sow our seeds according to their kind, the believers and the unbelievers. And that's why God has a law of separation. My Lord. Let's go to now. Leviticus 19, 19. Come on it now. says this, it says, keep my decrees. Do not make different kinds of animals. Do not plant your filled with two kinds of seeds and do not wear clothing woven of woven of two kinds of a material amen and like my husband said earlier when you move when you when you wove two things together they're going to intermingle and it's going to cause um some issues amen and so just like i said in the garden when you plant a seed beside another seed that's not of the same it's going to take away, it's going to grow bigger, it's going to grow stronger, it's going to take away the sunlight and the nutrients from the lesser seed. And so we have to be careful about what seeds we are sowing. My Lord. And so I want to, I want to lift this up right here. It mm -hmm. says, uh, in verse 10, it says, you shall not ply, mm -hmm. plow with an ox mm -hmm. and a donkey together. Yes. And so here, uh, what the, what the word is saying is, is that if, if, um, they're yoked together, mm -hmm. and you have an ox on one side, and yes. you have a donkey on the other. Mm -hmm. you're, 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 you, you are uh, working two sets of animals. An yes. ox will move faster than a donkey. That's right. Uh, uh, the donkey is going to want to hold down the ox. Yes. And so, and so, uh, so often we have people, and we wonder why when when you finish speaking to these people, mm -hmm. you are drained because they have put so much on you. They yes. have. They have. Uh, uh, put so much of their burdens on you yes. that it has uh, took all of your energy. It has sapped all your energy. Yes. And this is what will happen if the uh, if you plow with the ox and the donkey. Yes. It, it will it will it will hold the ox down. The yes. ox is very strong. The yes. ox is meant to plow. Yes. And, and, and if you have an ox and you're plowing mm -hmm. with this ox, it will be able to do the field in mm -hmm. a different time length yes. than the donkey. That's and right. see, and see, because you're talking about two different uh, mm -hmm. animals. It, 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 if you go back to uh, Solomon. Yes. Solomon was able to give God uh, a, a thousand ox, yes. and, and that was a very yes. high offering because uh, of the value of it. The, the, right. the, the uh, donkey and the ox are not equivalent yes. in value, yes. and so and so if you are valued here, yes. and, and somebody else is valued here, yes. not saying that they cannot come up, but what I'm saying is is that they they pull you down. And so, and so, so often mm -hmm. you cannot be uh, pulled down from somebody that wants to pull you down. You That's have right. to release that. You cannot be mingled together. If you go over to England right now mm -hmm. and in uh, London, England, uh, you can walk around the streets. However, mm -hmm. you cannot get into the, 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 the queen's palace because right. they are different seeds. We are not uh, uh, of their seeds. They are totally different seeds. And so here, uh, uh, this is an example how uh, if you put two things together, you can pull one down and drain the other one. Amen. Amen. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 6, 14 and 15. It says, do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what does righteousness and wickedness have in common? My Lord. Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? What harmony is there between Christ and Bilal? Bilal is another name for Satan. What does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? What agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will live with them and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. Amen. So God is saying we are not to co-mingle with unbelievers. Amen. We have nothing in common. You are to minister to them, but you're not to live their lifestyle. You're not to be out doing the things that people of the world doing. And that's what um, Paul is telling the Corinthians, because obviously some of the Corinthians were joining back in with doing idolatry things and they were doing other practices that were 
unbecoming of God. And so he had to go back to them and tell them, listen, you cannot be yoked together with unbelievers. You are royal priesthood. You are joint heirs to the kingdom of God. That's who we are, people. We cannot so seeds in the world. Amen. We cannot let the world so seeds into us. Let me rephrase that. We cannot let the world so seeds into us, but we are to sow seeds into the world and then God waters it. Amen. Right. And that's why when you open your mouth, when you go to speak to people, amen, you are sowing a seed and then you've done your job. You've done your portion. You got to let God water that seed. Amen. And then bring them in. Amen. You could talk to people all day long as say, come to my church, come to my church. But if you don't have a conversation with them, if you don't meet them where they are, if you don't sow a seed of, of, um, of love into them, because the Bible now. says we are to love each other, amen, love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Amen. Good morning, Rhonda. She said we must be transformed. That's right. We have to transform. The Bible says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. So when we transform our mind, the seed in us, which is our spirit, will begin to grow. Amen. We are to feed our spirit. We have to feed our spirit. So when we sow seeds into these earthen vessels that are not of God, amen, now we're diminishing the work of Christ on the cross and what he did so that we can have salvation. We can live in this Come life. On, we can Come be on, on Facebook teaching you today. Amen. We are diminishing the work of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, when we sow the wrong seed. My Lord, my Lord. And so I want to lift up again for the people that just came in. We are in Deuteronomy mm -hmm. uh, 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 22. Mm -hmm. And I want to go to verse 11. It yes. says, you shall not wear cloth mm -hmm. of wool and linen mixed together. Yes. Now, 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 uh, uh, we live in in the DMV. Uh, yes. Um, Washington, Maryland, and Virginia. Yes. And 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 they have a word for this. It's called Bama. See, see, see. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you should not wear cloth or wool and linen mixed yes. together. Yes. Uh, uh, okay. Now, now let's <laughs> let's get down to the principles Come of it. The here, principles sir. of it is is this. Yes. Wool comes from a sheep. Yes, it does. A uh, a uh, 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 linen is it comes from a plant, a yes. flat, the flax plant. Yeah. And so, and so, if 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 uh if wool comes from the sheep, mm -hmm. and you are uh from the the uh if you're from uh, if you're a child of of Israel, you're Israel. <laughs> in my love. <laughs> if you are a child of God, yes, you will gra gravitate to the wool because right. the wool is the sheep. That's right. See, see, see what I'm saying? I'm gonna say it again, and just in case you missed it, yes. if you are a child of God, yes, you want to wear the clothes of the wool because the yes. wool comes from the sheep. Yeah, the sheep uh, or goat. Right. Yes. And so and so the linen is is it comes from the flax plant. Yes. And so this right here is 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 uh like artificial because it comes from a plant yes. it's it's not real mm -hmm. however the wool is natural and it comes from the sheep That's and right. so so often we want to mix things that do not need to be mixed together That's and right. so this is what Moses is saying this is the law of separation yes. uh, uh, um, we ought to know that Moses knows about the law of separation because yes. when the uh, Egyptians was coming when Pharaoh was coming he yes. came and, and, and he uh, separated the water Part from the, the, gra Come from on, the ground and, and so that they were able <laughs> yes. to walk through yes. and as uh, they were yes. walking through Moses uh, put the water yes. back down on the Pharaoh and his uh, uh, chariots, uh, yes. wh whomever chariots, whoever yes. was on on that ground. Yes. And so we have to understand that when uh, we come together, uh, we want to be uh, children of God that gravitate to the wool yes. because uh, so so often we forget, we forget that uh, we can, we are in this world, but yes. not of this world. That's and right. so well, worldly things, you will not understand. Yes. However, the word you will understand. And whenever right. you see a situation like this, you have to put your law of separation in yes. and, and know where you stand and begin to minister that's to right. help the person that's in the world. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's go to Genesis 25 verse 23 it says the lord said to her two nations are in your womb and two peoples from within you will be separated one people will be stronger than the other and the other will serve the younger brother amen Come on we are talking about jacob and esau the children of uh, rebecca 
and Isaac, amen, Jacob and Esau, they were twins in their mother's womb, amen, and God was telling her, you have two nations in your body, amen, you are, you are raising two people who are going to do two separate things after their birth, amen, and we know the story of, of Jacob, Jacob was the one who did anything to get the birthright from his brother, Come amen, on, he got the birthright from Esau, amen, they became, uh, um, discord they had issues between one another and they separated amen and then we know about jacob and he met the angel of the lord he fought with the angel of the lord until his hip got popped and the angel said what is your name he said my name is jacob he said not now he said your name from now on will be israel amen he became a father of nations amen just like abraham the father of many nations so god has a way of separating you even in the womb amen he told her you have two nations in you amen and even in if we go to Cain and Abel, like my husband said, the seed of Satan and the seed of God, amen, there are two different seeds, amen, you can come from the same womb and have two different, uh, um, two different assignments, amen, Cain assignment was one, and then Abel's assignment was one, Jacob had an assignment, Esau had an assignment, come on, you can come, come from the come same womb, same seed, but be two different seeds, amen, and that will cause your family to call, um, to hate on you, it will cause your family to not like you, it would, because the blessings of God is on your life, amen, so the seed of God will always have discord with the seed of Satan, amen, on, it will bring enmity, that's what he said, I will bring enmity between you and the woman, amen, he will, she will use her, you, he will bruise his heel on the seed of Satan, Come amen, so we have to be careful about who we allow into our circle, who we allow into our homes, because everything we listen to is the law first mentioned. What you first hear is what you believe, amen, so you have to be careful what you listen to, what seed you allow to be planted into your spirit. My Lord, my Lord, and so for the people who just came in, we started off with Deuteronomy mm -hmm. 22, 10. And uh, Minister Issa jumped to some scriptures. I'm going to mm -hmm. jump to Jonah. And I'm, I'm going to yes. go to Jonah 1, 15. Yes. Uh, so they said, so they picked up Jonah and hurled him into the sea. Mm -hmm. And the sea ceased from its raging. Mm -hmm. And so let me uh, give you a background. I didn't want to read uh, too much of Jonah. I just wanted yes. to get to the point. Mm -hmm. And so, so here, Jonah... Uh, was given an assignment by yes. God. And so uh, J Jonah ignored the assignment. He mm -hmm. jumped in a boat and went in the opposite direction. Yes. And as he went in the opposite direction, yes. uh, uh, what ended up happening is uh, God shifted the seat. Yes. And everyone that was in the boat, they began to pray and holler out to the Lord because yes. they, they, they said this man uh, we were fine until this man got yes. in the ship. Yes. And so what they did is they hurled Jonah over into the water. And when they threw him into the water, mm -hmm. what ended up happening was the sea was calm. Yes. And so, so often, see, this situation right here, mm -hmm. uh, it was a separation, the law of separation. These men did not know the Lord. However, they yes. hollered out to the Lord. Yes, they then did. they separated on, Jonah yes. and threw him into the water because they had to calm the sea. Yes. The, the, the sea needed a sea. Yes, come the, on, the, sir. To calm down yes. from the rage. Absolutely. So, so often what ends up happening is, is that we forget mm -hmm. we, if you have you ever, uh, this is a situation with Jonah. Have you ever been somewhere and everything was fine until yes. this particular person came yes. and, and everything yes. began to shift. And, 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 yes. and you saying, now what's going on? Mm -hmm. Everything was fine until this joker right here yes. came into my house. Yes. And so sometimes you have to have that uh, discernment mm -hmm. to be able to have the law of separation yes, so that God can get what he can get. And see, uh, uh, God began to deal with Jonah when yes. he was thrown in the water. That's right. God uh, uh, had the well to come and suck him up yes. when he was there for three days days and three nights. Mm -hmm. And so uh, uh, Jonah needed to be separated yes. so God could speak to him. So yes, often that's right. that's we, right. we, we wonder why we don't have friends. We wonder why we're the only one and people don't understand us because mm -hmm. we have to build a relationship with God. That's God right. needs to get you off by yourself. That's the, right. the law of separation has to happen yes. so that God to move you yes. to, to, to be uh, alone yes. in the wilderness, just like John the Baptist, so yes. that he can minister to you yes. and what your assignment is. That's and so right. uh, so often we uh, go against rough water because we don't want to fulfill our assignment. Yes. Now, if we go to Acts 
because she was talking about being separated so God can talk to you. Mm -hmm. Acts 13 talks about where God says, separate for me Barnabas and Saul for the work that I have for them. Come on Separation now. means for a special purpose. Amen. He's separating you for a special purpose for his kingdom and for his glory because everything God does through you, you ought to be giving him the glory. That's why he does things through us so that people will know who he is, what he's doing in our lives and the power that he has in this land. Amen. So if he separates you, it's for a purpose, just like Saul and Barnabas. He separated them for the work of the ministry. God is separating you for the work of the ministry. He's separating you so that you can do some things in the life of people. Amen. Because if he doesn't break you into a lot of pieces, he can't use you to help many pieces. And that's why we suffer with the way we do so that he can send us out and be able to relate to people's issues. Because if you've never been through anything, how are you going to minister to anybody? You can't even associate with what they're going through because you've never experienced it. And my, my pastor, my apostle talks about this all the time. He says you have these 12 and 13 year old bishops who've never experienced anything yet and still they are leading a flock. Amen. They have no experience to teach you anything. They have not experienced anything in their life that can even relate to an adult's uh, a situation and what adults have gone through. Amen. So I want to go back to Deuteronomy 22, nine. It says, if you, it says here, um, the crops you plant, but also the fruit of vineyard will be defiled. Amen. What is defiled? Defiled means to change the condition of something. Amen. Wow. wow. You Come changing on, the condition of what God is trying to do in your life when you sow the wrong seed. You're changing the condition of what he said in his word. Because remember in Jeremiah 29, 11, he said, for I know the plans I've had for you. Amen. If you sow in the wrong seed, now you are altering what God is trying to do. And just like when Jesus was with the disciples, the first he said, why do they defile themselves by not washing their hands? Amen. And Jesus said, it's not what goes in that defiles you and what comes out of your mouth that defiles you. Amen. Remember I said earlier, out of the heart flows the issues of life. Out of the heart speaks the mouth. Amen. When you have the wrong seed in you, you're going to speak evil. Amen. If you have anger in you, you're going to speak angry. If you have love in you, you're going to speak love. Those are the seeds that we are supposed to sow in the body of Christ. And when we listen to too many teachers, too many preachers, amen, you taking all that in, amen, and you're going to sow what you have reaped from them. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord. And so, and so I'm, I'm, we're in Deuteronomy 22 and, and uh, I'm going to lift up uh, verse five. It mm -hmm. says, a woman shall not wear a man's mm -hmm. garment, nor shall a man yes. put on a woman's cloak. Yes. For whoever does these things is an abomination to yes. the Lord, your God. I'm yes. just lifting this up because we see what's going on in the world. Yes. We, we see uh, 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 the character and, and, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, the spirit that's taken on yes. of the world. Yes. And so we have to be cognitive yes. that, that certain things cannot be worn right. by certain people because right. certain behaviors will begin <clears throat> to manifest. And so, and so here, mm -hmm. this is the law of separation. This is what yes. Moses said. This ain't what Minister Curtis said. Yes. So don't be mad with me. Yes. I'm just the messenger That's with the right. word. Amen. Where, where, where it says right here, <clears throat> excuse me, a woman shall not wear a man's garment, yes. nor shall a man wear, put on a woman's cloak. That's right. That's For whoever right. does this, uh, these things is an abomination yes. to the Lord, your God. Yes. And, so, and so we want to honor God. We don't want to be an abomination. We want yes. to be uh, creatures of 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 of, uh, of of God because He mm -hmm. is the Creator. Yes. And and whatever uh, Moses says, mm -hmm. it is what it is. Yes. And so if you under if you understand this word, if you remember this word, you remember yes. when uh, Moses came down off the mountain. They they had took all their gold mm -hmm. and they began to worship. Yes. Uh, they melt down that gold and worship something. But that, when Moses came down, mm -hmm. he 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 was angry. Mm -hmm. And so it, the law of separation came in. He said, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. I, I've been up here with God for all these days. Yes. I've been up here getting a word to come down and give you a word and here yes. you are you are worshiping a cow yes you, you took your earrings you took your toe rings yes. you took 
uh, all types of rings, nose rings, and put it together to worship something. Yes. And, and that right there, uh, Moses was disgusted because yes. if you understand this word, uh, Aaron never spoke to God. Yes. Miriam never spoke to God. That's However, right. Moses spoke to them face to face. That's right. Miriam and Aaron had dreams, mm -hmm. uh, but that was the furthest they could get to God. That's and right. so here, Moses had a direct contact with God. Yes, he did. And as he had that direct contact with God, he was able to come down mm -hmm. and, and, and stop this foolishness mm -hmm. that was going down at yes. the end of the, at the bottom of the mountain. So there has to be a law of separation. That's you, right. You cannot, and what I'm saying is to the children of God, you just cannot go with along with anything. There, mm -hmm. there comes a time and a point where you have to intervene. Mm -hmm. You have to minister and say, wait a minute, this is not right. Now, you can do it with love. Yes. I, I, I suggest do it with love, yes. but there comes a point in time where we have to step in and say, hey, this is not godly. This is not right. Yes. Let me show you mm -hmm. uh, the godly principles so that you can stay in favor with God. Absolutely, absolutely. So I want to go back to Deuteronomy 22, 9, but I want to read verse 10. It says, do not plow with an ox and a donkey Come yoke on. together. Amen. And like Minister Curtis said earlier, the ox is stronger than the donkey, is faster than a donkey, and a donkey is a little slow. We all know what a donkey is. Amen. The donkey moves slow. He lags behind. He doesn't move too fast. He's at his own pace. A donkey is an all-purpose vehicle. Amen. My a Lord. donkey was used to carry a load. He was used to even carry Christ. Amen. So if we go to um, Matthew 21, let's remember that Jesus rode in on a donkey. He rode in on a donkey to show his deity, amen, to show he was the king coming into Jerusalem, amen. So even God will use a donkey to sow a seed into the life of people. If we go to Numbers 22, a donkey was used to rebuke Balaam, amen. The donkey spoke to Balaam because Balaam was supposed to do one thing, but he decided to go and rebuke the children of Israel. And so the angel of the Lord stood in the way so that he couldn't go where he wanted to go. And because his eyes was not open to see the angel of the Lord standing there with his sword, the donkey could see him and the donkey turned off and slammed into a wall and it hurt Balaam's foot. It crushed his foot in between the wall. Balaam got mad and began to beat the donkey three times and the donkey hollered Lord, out, Lord, why are you beating me? So even God will use a donkey, amen, to speak out and sow a seed into someone to save their life. He spoke to save the life of Balaam because he was on his way to do something that God had not permitted him to do. So even though the Bible says we're not to plow with an ox or a donkey. Don't bring a donkey with you, amen. The donkey will lag behind you. A donkey will hold you back. It will stunt your spiritual growth, amen. It will keep you from your purpose and your destiny, amen. And that's why he said, if you have an ox, you use an ox. If you read throughout the Bible, most of the people who plow, who were farmers, used an ox, amen. Come because on, the ox could get more things done. They Come were faster. On, they were quicker, Come amen. On, they moved smoother, amen. And they got things done in the purpose that they were used for so when you are in the kingdom of god don't drag donkeys along with you pick up the ox that's going to help you grow spiritually that's going to help you to maintain your purpose amen that's going to help the anointing that's on your life that's going to help to elevate you amen and that's what an ox does an ox is strong he's fast he's powerful amen and you have somebody who's higher in the spirit than you my amen Lord, Lord. and that's that's what we all need. We need a seed that's in a higher spiritual realm than we are that can pull us up to where we need to be. My Lord, my Lord, that, that I mean, man, you, I can't even follow that. Yes, you can. Yeah. No, 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 no. Come on, Bishop. I cannot follow that. Come that on, Bishop. is a solid word. That yes. is a word uh, where uh, you, you use that again example of mm -hmm. the ox. The ox is a multi-purpose. The ox is like an yes. SUV. Yes. Uh, the ox is, is all terrain. He, yes. can, he can do all things. Yes. And, and, and here the donkey will lag behind. Yes. However, you can use that donkey. Yes. So, yes. so I mean, um, you, you gave it so eloquently. I really don't want to touch it, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but Amen. it was, a, it was, a, it was an awesome word yes. because it, it was a word that was needed. And yes. so often we don't understand yes. our, our um, position mm -hmm. in, in the ministry. So right. we, we don't understand yes. that we are intercessors yes. and we're able to step in mm -hmm. and, and minister yes. in a 
loving way right. uh, that will draw people to Christ because people don't know if yes. they don't if they never read it if they never uh, yes. meditated on it they don't know That's right. and so we can't get angry with them we have to help them yes. to see what God has for them absolutely so remember we're not we're in the world we're not of the world Remember, the Bible says right here, do not wear clothes of wool and linen woven together, amen. What happens when you buy that? Let's, let's talk about it in real life. When you have a fabric that is mixed together, you have cotton and you have linen. When you go to wash it, what happens? That joke will shrink. Come on. It shrinks because you mix together a type, a, uh, a type of material that should not have been because each one should be washed separately. They should be washed differently, taken care of differently. On, Some things you have to take to the cleaners. Some things you can go ahead and throw in the wash. Amen. And that's what believers are. We are the ones that are cleaning out the, the, the world. Amen. We are the ones who are supposed to be the light of the world. Amen. We can't combine with the unbelievers. We are supposed to make a difference in the life of the, of the believer. So when the Bible says, do not mix wool and linen together, do not mix believers with unbelievers. Amen. We're not saying you can't be friends with them, but when you are friends with them, you're supposed to be trying to change the condition of their life, change the situation of their life. Your life should not represent what they are doing, amen. They should not be an influence on you. You're supposed to be the influence on them, amen. The Bible says we are the salt of the earth, amen. So we have to make sure that we are sowing seeds of love, joy, peace, patience, and kindness, amen. All the gifts of the spirit are the things that we're supposed to be sowing into, not allowing the world to sow into us what they think we should believe, what they think we should do. Like in this pandemic, amen, they shut down the churches, try to make us believe we don't need the building, okay? We still have the body of Christ in us because we have the spirit of God in us, amen. There's nothing they can do about that. When you have a prophet, amen, the voice of the prophet is the voice of God, amen. So now. no matter what they do with the building, as long as you're sitting under a prophet, you have the voice of God right there before you. And we invite you to come to the Altar International Church because we sit under a mighty man of God, a mighty prophet who brings us fresh revelation every day, amen. So we invite you to come out on this Friday at 7 p.m. The Zoom link will be on the Alta International Church Facebook page. It will also be on my page and Minister Curtis' page, amen. Look for that Zoom link. Click on it. Come see what we're about. We had somebody who came in on this Sunday and they said, man, y'all doing some good things at the altar. Come in and just visit us and see what the word has for you. Amen. See the fresh, hear the fresh revelation that God is delivering to his servant, the prophet. Amen. Amen. If you look, if you love this word, if you enjoy uh, uh, what we uh, yes. Come to teach. Yes. Uh, you can go to www.prayertimewiththeapostle.com slash mm -hmm. donation. Yes. Because there is no nation like a donation. That's right. And so a seed. If you want a t-shirt, yes. they have coronavirus t-shirts yes, on the do. Alter International page. Yes. Um, uh, on, on Facebook, yes. you can go and get you a T-shirt, fifteen dollars plus yes. shipping, absolutely, um, uh, and 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 be blessed with Amen. something tangible. So, yes. thank uh, you, Lord. This is a ministry that we pray. Yes. If you have a prayer, yes, hit us up in our inbox. We yes. will pray for you absolutely. because uh, a prayer is changes things. It's, yes. it's a beautiful thing. Yes. and so uh, so often we ask that you uh, come and see us again. We'll be yes. here tomorrow morning. Yes. Uh, and uh, come in on Miracle Friday and yes. get a word. Yes. Uh, come on the Zoom, yes. show your face yes. and get a word. You'll yes. be surprised the word that you get. Absolutely. And then you can join us Sunday too at 11 a.m. Amen. Um, I feel led to pray for the people today. Amen. I feel led to pray for you all, to pray for your day because the book of Job said, have you commanded your morning? Amen. Let's command our morning this morning. Um, like the Bible tells us to do. So I'm going to pray for each and every one of you. If you have a specific prayer request, you can type it in the comment box right now. I will address it in the prayer. Amen. My I'm going to give you a second. If you have a prayer request, go ahead and type it in and I will pray what you're asking God for. Amen. On in this season of your life, because God is doing some mighty things in this season. Amen. He has done some mighty things in the life of my husband and I this season. Amen. We went from a life of being in poverty, amen, to now where he's bringing us into prosperity. And we're just so grateful for what God is doing, not only in our life, but the life of our children, in the life of our church family, amen. During this pandemic, we have not had to beg for bread. 
We have not been wanting for anything because we have been praying through this whole pandemic, amen. We started praying before the pandemic, amen. Prayer changes things, amen. So when we pray and we ask God, good morning, Miss Paula, good morning, Miss Bryson. We, when we ask God to do some things in our life, amen, we have to humble ourselves before him before he will even honor it amen because the bible says before you thought it he already heard it and before you spoke it it was already answered just like daniel he had prayed for 21 days but his prayer was hindered by the principalities amen because they did not want his prayer to be answered amen we got to break through and get these prayers answered so that god can do some things not only in your life the life of your family the life of your co-workers amen you got to be that light that the people need to see you may be the only walking bible the only word somebody sees today amen so be that person amen who comes in amen with a smile on your face today be that person amen who speaks life into somebody today amen sow that seed of love today into somebody's life amen i don't know who i'm talking to but somebody hears me on come this on morning now. come on sow now. that seed of love compassion strength into somebody because during this pandemic a lot of people are losing in their houses a lot of people are losing their possession but the one thing you cannot lose is the holy spirit the holy spirit lives in you amen the holy spirit strengthens you and he keeps you amen so be that person who sows a seed into somebody who may just look like their their spirit is downcast they look like they're going through some things if you see somebody on the side of the road who just look like they're going through something be that person who speaks life into them amen i wish we had somebody who would have spoken to us at a young age and got us where we need to be. Speaking to the young people right now, they're going through a lot of things online in school, trying to do this on an online school thing. They're suffering because they're not getting the education they deserve. Speak into the life of the young people because they are the ones who are going to be the ones to lead us in the future. Amen. It says, and a child shall lead them. Amen. Not Let's well. lead properly. Show great examples. Amen. Let us pray. Father, I bless your name today. I give you glory honor and praise oh god i thank you today oh god we command our morning to be great we command our morning to be blessed Hello. because you said you are blessed so we are blessed oh god you said you are righteous so we are righteous oh god i pray oh god for the prosperity of your people oh lord you said in your word oh god you wish that we prosper as our soul prosper and be in good health keep your people healthy today oh god let no evil come nigh thy dwelling oh god touch them oh god that they may do the things in the kingdom of god that you command them to do oh god you said you are in your word in deuteronomy lord god you said you are the lord thy god that gives us the ability to obtain wealth father i thank you lord god for helping them to be wealthy in this season of their life oh god that they may not be Beg for bread, oh God, because you are the keeper and the lover of our soul, oh God. Bless their children, bless their husbands, bless their wives, their families, oh God. Bless them on their job today. Bless them in their travels today, oh God. Keep them safe, oh God. Father, I thank you, oh God, for helping them in their health, oh God. We know that you are Jehovah Rapha. Whatever issues are going on in their body, I declare and decree them healed now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I declare them prosperous now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, oh God. They will not need for anything today, oh God, because you have already set me for the net angels. You said you have put your angels in charge over us, oh God. So I thank you for sending your angels before them today in every decision that they make and every move that they make, oh God, that they may not be hindered in this life. Father, I bless you. I thank you. I praise you. You are worth all the adoration, all the glory and the honor in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray. Amen. 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 Go out and be great today, people. Go out and do some great things today, everybody. Go out and show people what God is doing in your life, in the life of your family. Amen. We bless God for you today. Thank you for being with us today. Join us tomorrow at the same time, 7 15 a.m. We love you and there's nothing you can do about it. Have a wonderful day, guys. We bless you. Have a great day.